My name is Joe Compton. I am an independent author and filmmaker and the executive producer here at Go Indie Now. I may know a lot of things, but that's because I never stop learning. I figured I wasn't alone in that. So I asked my friends and colleagues if they wouldn't mind giving us an hour of their time to each teach us something new. So, welcome to Indie Teachables 101, brought to you by the Speculative Fiction Academy. Like vampires and ghouls? Superheroes and androids? Want to learn how to write them? The Speculative Fiction Academy is perfect for you. With five curriculum tracks and three ways to learn, you'll go beyond the fundamentals to hone your craft. Visit speculativefictionacademy.com to learn more. For our series premiere, we're welcoming Vanessa Junta. She is a freelance editor, an author of the Soul Cavern series, and the founder and lead admin for the Facebook group, The Writing Tribe. Tonight, Vanessa is going to show us how to manage and navigate through Scrivener. Scrivener is a word processing program and outliner designed for writers. It provides a management system for documents, notes, and metadata. This allows the user to organize notes, concepts, research, and whole documents for easy access and references. Scrivener offers templates for screenwriters, fiction writers, and nonfiction manuscript writers. So let's get to learning, shall we? Here's Joe Compton and Vanessa Junta. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the world premiere of our new show indie teachables 101 i am your host joe compton i am going to be your conduit to asking all the questions that i i am also very curious to learn about and luckily i have the people to learn it from the best people to learn it from for sure vanessa being the first person i thought of to do this and uh she is somebody who really wants to teach us stuff and Scrivener is one of her wheelhouses. So uh, I know nothing about it. I don't use it. I've never used it. I I learned more about it in that little three minute intro that you just saw than I had ever known before. So well, we are we going to blow your mind. Joe. Uh, your awesome. Mind. Awesome. I hope so. I, you know, we, we've got a good crowd going here, so if you all are out there, you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments. I will work them in, uh, whether we do it at the end, like a Q&A, or whether we work them in as they go. If there's something prevalent that you're watching and you want us to go over something that you see, please let us know, because that's what we're here for today. Actually, that's what Vanessa's here for. I'm here to just make sure that this show goes Come goes to off. Me, my children, come to me. <laughs> <Get> my <food. laughs> so, uh, I I wanted to kind of start giving everybody a little background about where you came from in this process and 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 how you came about to Scrivener. When did you make the change to Scrivener, and why did you make that change? I actually am an early adopter of the Windows Scrivener. I I was literally waiting for them to make a Windows one for two years. Wow. Every month or two, I would check the website. Have they released the Windows version? No. And this was like, I was still living in Florida and I moved back from Florida in 2008. So this was a good 15 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. um, so, so really I, a year after it came out, because it came out in January of 2007. So, that's when the Windows one came out. That's yeah, when that's, that's when Scrivener started. Was two thousand? It was January two thousand seven. So that's what that's what Google said. I, I don't think I mean, Google is right because I think right. Google, I think it was around prior to that. Maybe um, in the beta. Uh, 
No, it was it was out for Mac prior to that. Okay. I'm almost All positive. Right. Anyway, my guess is that the 2007 is the Windows version okay. when it came out. Because cool. uh, yeah, I was waiting and waiting and waiting, and I was using other things. There was a there was a program called uh, Liquid Story Binder, which is a really unfortunate name, but uh, <laughs> it, it was it was similar. Um, it was similar to what Scrivener is, but it was not nearly as user friendly. And some people would argue that Scrivener is not user friendly, but it is once you kind of understand how it works. So anyway, so that's that's how I came in. I you know prior to that I was mostly using Word and then the Liquid Story Binder. Um, so yeah, I was real excited when it came out. And you're somebody who's computer savvy. You're you're computer literate. So how would you grading it on a curve? How difficult would you say Scrivener is to learn if you? just open it up and never saw a class or anything like that. You probably wouldn't have any idea how to use it. If you haven't at least watched a video or something, I mean, you'd figure out, I think, how to create a text document and type in it. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a problem, you know, because you basically open it and it's, a, there it is, there's a text document in front of you, but it would, but if you're not going to at least invest some time in figuring out how to use it, you may as well just use Windows. I mean, you may as well just use Word or whatever word processing, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that using Word is not valid. It certainly is, right. you know, it just depends on, on the person. But I think if, if the thing about Scrivener is there is so, it is so powerful. It has so much to it that it's really daunting. You know, and I get this. I totally I'm still learning things like about a year and a half ago. I started using like custom metadata that has been there this whole time. <laughs> I just never like I was like, oh, that's too much to think about. Right. So so it really the key to it is figure out what you need right now. Use that when you're comfortable using that, then you can move on to other, you know, more in-depth pieces of of the program nice. so that's that's my recommendation and absolutely watch videos there are some great videos out there uh literature and latte which is the company that created scrivener mm. they've got some great tutorials up youtube is like if you're a writer on youtube you cannot spit without hitting <laughs> a, a scrivener, a scrivener. <laughs> so, yeah. so there's there's all kinds of stuff out there so yeah, the, Maddie says she has zero experience with this, so she's super excited tonight. And uh, Carol also says she just upgraded to Scrivener three. So. Yeah, Scrivener Ooh. three. One, the one thing we're really not going to talk about during this is um, compiling, which is how you pull all of your documents together and then mm -hmm. export it to Word or an ebook format or PDF or whatever. Because when they shifted Windows users only had Scrivener 1 or 1 mm. point whatever, whereas Mac users were already on Scrivener 2. We never got a Scrivener 2 because <laughs> Windows are the best, you know, bastard stepchildren of, of Scrivener, but not anymore because when they released Scrivener 3 for Mac, they not too long after that released Scrivener 3 for Windows and they're finally, they finally got parity. They're finally the mm. same. But they completely redid the whole compile thing, and I don't understand how it works well enough to teach it yet. So we're not going to talk about that specifically. Um, awesome. So, so let's talk about let's talk about what what do you think is the hardest thing for somebody to learn right up front that you would welcome somebody to 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 teach right now? I think the way as writers, the way we think of word processing is very kind of ingrained at this point. We've all, even people my age, you know, we used, we used, well, back in the day, WordPerfect or Microsoft Word, right? So like we understand that Scrivener is not a word processor. It right. is basically a pro, it's a writing software with project management in it. Um, and so you have to the, the one of the hardest things is actually understanding that it's not going to work like word you know it's it's not because it's not a word processor so understanding the fact that you know you can create you can make it work however you want and you can have all these different pieces 
and you can bring them together in different ways. Um, I think just the idea, like the whole idea when I talk about compiling that confuses people because they're like, do you need printing? Well, yes, but you have to do this first. And they're like, I don't understand, right? So it's really kind of, I think the biggest hurdle is getting past those sort of ingrained, learned um, expectations of a word processing suite, you know, a, a word processing software to understand that Scrivener is much better bigger than that. Mm. That's probably the biggest hurdle. And I think when people get that, and then they understand what each of the pieces, uh, each of the main parts of the Scrivener screen are, like, mm. you, you don't need to know a lot to actually jump in and start using Scrivener. You really don't. Um, so I, I really think just getting there, getting our heads around how it's different, like that it's not just word processing, it's more than that. So stop, stop trying to think of it as, you know, you know, word for, you know, writers, it's not word for writers, it's project software for writers. <laughs> All right. So you want to, do you want to show us some stuff here? Do you want to yeah, uh, so walk let us me, through? Um, yeah. So this, you can go ahead and put it up. So this first screen, um, so when you open a new project, you won't have this many things. Uh, you will have novel. So these are templates, basically. You will have novel and novel with parts and short story. These three are the um, main uh, templates that you start with. As you can see, you can import top. See, there's my novel template. It even has my picture on it. That's how you know it's mine. Um, you know, but and, and you can download like um, where is it? Jamie Gold's uh, Master Beat Sheet template. And actually, my novel template is based on K.M. Wyland's uh, Outlining and Story Structure one. Hers is fabulous. And, I'll, and you'll see a little bit of that because one of the ones I'm going to open is based on that one. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So you, if you look on the left here, you also can just open a blank one that has nothing pre-made. Uh, they've also got nonfiction templates. They've also got script writing templates, which I have not as yet delved into, but as we have discussed <laughs> in the past, it is something that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And then they've got other things, persuasive lecture, poem, recipe collection. You can keep your recipes in Scrivener. All right, <laughs> so um, so when you open this, now I've got a, um, I'm gonna change, I'm not actually, I already oh, made, yeah. made one. So what, I'm gonna, is, what is, what is per, what is persuasive? Uh, lecturing. Lecturing? Is, isn't 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 lecturing persuasive to begin with isn't that kind of i don't know i've never opened it i have no idea all right so um so this is so if you open just novel template with no parts this is what you get right mm -hmm. so it has and it has all these notes in here and it tells you how to use the template you know it's really funny i keep running my mouse over the video screen instead of like over <laughs> here and i'm like why can't i why can't i click on anything what's happening so let me just move it and i will move it right here all right so all right. that way i can do it can you still see it Is this uh -huh. still? yep okay. yep all right so um so just to just to show you the parts so the way the screen is on the left it's called your binder Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to close everything up. So we just see the top of everything. So this is your binder. It is basically structured. It, it, it's something you're used to. It's basically structured like uh, your Windows Explorer mm -hmm. window where on the left where, you know, you have all your file folders and then in mm -hmm. your file folders are more folders and stuff and, and everything. So you already understand how this part works. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you can drag and drop things. So the thing that's in your manuscript, you see manuscript right here? Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that's in there, that's all of the actual writing pieces. It's not an outline, although there isn't, I'm not even going to get into that. It's not like your notes, it's not your research, it's just your manuscript, right? And you can divide mm -hmm. it however you want. It presets it to, you know, where you have a chapter folder and then you have a scene and you mm -hmm. see it's blank, right? Mm -hmm. So, Underneath that, you have characters. So th these are folders. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. You've got front matter, which is stuff that you, if you're indie publishing, this is pre-built-in stuff. Oh, neat. You can, 
yeah, that you can completely customize. Your project title is basically the name of what you named the Scrivener file. Your author, you can put in the settings. There's a place to put your author name. And so it'll just, you know, substitute that stuff in there. Copyright page, you can change it however you want, dedication. Anyway, we're not going to get into any of the front matter, but it, it preloads those kind of things if that's, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, I do it, have a I do have a question. Go ahead. So with characters and places and things like that, are those presets so that if you were to write something, uh, ah, it would populate I'll it? I'll All get right. there. Give me All one right. second. All right. So then you've got this little notes area. You've got a research area. Mm -hmm. Go down here. And the cool thing is they're showing, they, they upload these outputs so you can see mm. how it can, you know, how a novel is supposed to look, right? Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. say, oh, that's the order that, oh, look, the copyright page goes right after the title page. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Dedication goes there. So you have, you know, something to base it on. Now, to answer your question, whoops, down here, you see template sheets. It's a character sketch, right? Mm -hmm. Setting sketch. So these up here, the two the characters and places, those are folders. Mm -hmm. They have special little icons, but they're folders. <laughs> so you can you can create a new character. And uh, there are different, there are probably three different ways to do it, but we're going to do mm -hmm. it by right-clicking on the characters, right? Okay. So we're on the folder, mm -hmm. right-click. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Is it add? Yes, add. And you can either do a new text or a new folder because you can nest folders. Or look, character sketch. You put in your character sketch. Joe Compton is our new character. Compton. Compton. <laughs> yes, I'm a writer, right? So now you mm -hmm. have Joe, right? And you've got mm -hmm. character name, like you've got all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can go into the templates and you can change them however you want. When we mm -hmm. shift my my actual one of my manuscripts, you'll see that I have a completely different template. Mm -hmm. um, and you do the same thing with places and everything. So um, does that make sense so far? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So obviously we've already looked at this window. This is our our text window, our text. Uh, item window, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and across the top here, you can see it's got all the standard, you know, font stuff and everything. It's got a highlight. This over here is highlight. Mm -hmm. You know, you can highlight it with different things, change the color of your text. Um, and that's the cool thing. Like when you, when you think about writing a word and you want to Maybe you don't like seeing it double spaced. Maybe you like it single spaced. Maybe you like to write in blue instead of black. Mm. But then when you go to print it out or you go to submit it, you know, the story somewhere, you have to go in and change it and make sure it's right. Right. This is where Scrivener is really powerful because you remember we were talking about compile. Mm hmm. What you do with compile, and we're not going to get into the details of that because I can't teach it yet, but I will be able to at some point. <laughs> um, the whole thing is you can you can do your manuscript in whatever font you want. Here, oh, we'll do black adder. So this is black adder font. Wow, that's way too small. So we're going to make it gigantic because I'm blind and I can't see anything. So we're going to make <laughs> it that big, right? And so I can write in this. But when I go to compile, I set my compile settings. I want Times New Roman font. I want 12 points. I want it double spaced and all of that. So you can add that to your compile settings so that when you compile it, you can write it however you want. It compiles the way it needs to compile. So that's one of the cool things about Scrivener is you can do whatever you want in your project. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to submit or whatever, you choose the things. Um, the other part I want to talk about, let me see, do I want to do inspector first? Yes, let's do inspector first. So see over here on the right-hand side, it's got the little eye. Yeah. You open that up, it opens up a whole another column, right? Mm. And you see it has little tabs at the top. This first one is your note, basically your note tab. So you can do your synopsis. Let's see, Joe Compton 
starts a new project. So that is my synopsis for this scene. Now you can set, looking back at the binder, you don't have to divide up between by chapters if you don't want to. You can divide it up by act. You can divide it up by beats. You can divide it up whatever whatever way works the best. If you just want mm -hmm. to do each scene individually in its own thing and not divide it into sections like chapters or anything like that till the end, you can do that. It's because no you're problem. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can do that. It's no problem. So, um, you know, you can add as many of these scene two, and then you can add scene three, right? You can add mm -hmm. as many as you want. All right. Mm -hmm. So going back to the right-hand side, we've got the scene, right? Mm -hmm. You can also drop an image. If you click this little button up here, you can toggle between an image or your words. So mm. maybe you have an image that kind of evokes the feel that you want in the scene. Mm -hmm. And so you want to use that as inspiration as you're writing. So you upload it, you have it right there yep. and there it is. Right. And then you cool. can make notes. Oops. I didn't mean to close it. You can make notes. So, and this is really helpful. You know, if you're typing and you're in chapter four and you thought, oh, I have this really cool idea, but I have to remember to go back to chapter two and add X, then you just pop back to chapter two, write in the notes, add X, and then go back to your chapter four and finish writing. Um, gotcha. And then it'll always be there. So this part are bookmarks. I don't really use bookmarks, so I'm not going to really talk about them. Um, but you can create, you basically... Um, you can create, you can add internal bookmarks so you can bookmark different pieces. So mm -hmm. if you're using, say you've got um, a specific piece of research that's important for this scene, mm -hmm. you can basically bookmark it so that you can get to it easily. Nice. Um, and you can also do external bookmarks like, uh, like a web page or whatever. So um, this next one is your metadata. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. <laughs> but it's awesome uh <laughs> you have general metadata let me see yeah we're, we're not going to get into this because this is this is going to be too much for this open one but uh custom metadata is really really powerful and i'll show you this in a minute when we look at one of mine if you mm -hmm. want to keep up with things like a character story arc or um maybe a relationship arc or you want to keep track of who is in which scene, custom mm -hmm. metadata is where you go. And I'll show you more about that. And the same with keywords, but not going to go into that. You don't need that. You don't need that. Mm -hmm. to see. I'm just showing it to you. So you see it. I'm, I'm talking really fast. Is that okay? Yes, you're good. You so it? far, so good. Excellent. Um, and this right here is actually super handy. This is snapshots. I didn't start using this until probably about three or four years ago. So mm -hmm. I don't need that. It's awesome. <laughs> it's perfect for when you're doing revisions, because what you do is you hit the little plus, you get a very satisfying camera sound. <laughs> and I'm and I'm laughing because Vanessa has a thing about sounds. She loves sounds. <laughs> I love sounds. I bet I probably could do sounds right here. I wonder if I could. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm gonna check. We're gonna see. <laughs> okay anyway um so what, what you can do is anytime you're going to go to make a change in your manuscript in your scene that you're working on and yeah. you know i always try to remember i don't always remember but i most of the time remember to just add a quick you know a quick just take a snapshot and what happens is when you click on it it shows down here on the bottom everything in there does that make sense? Uh -huh. Oh wait, what did wait? I missed it. What did they say? Oh, she says she said great oh. topic, Vanessa. Sounds yes, <laughs> yes. So that <laughs> yeah, sounds don't come with Scrivener. That's, that's <laughs> you've got to upload. I them. guess you could put sounds in Scrivener. I don't know. I've never <laughs> tried. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so it's really handy. And if you look right here, you've got this compare. All right, so mm -hmm. let's say I go black adder font sucks and I hate it. 
Right, so that's the new one, right? So you do compare and it sh you see on the bottom, it shows uh -huh. you what changed. What? You see, watch, mm -hmm. we'll go back to original. That's the original. Then it's comparing to what you have. So you can at any point go in and see what things you, what changes you've made, mm -hmm. which I think is super, super cool. And you yeah, can change. Yeah, really neat. Yeah, you can, you know, you just use your regular windows, you know, you double click in there and you can change the title. Um, weird thing. All right. <laughs> you guys hear my dog? Uh -huh. Yeah, he's in the, he's in the um, garage right below me. So I apologize. He, I don't know what he's going crazy about. Um, all right. Over here, comments and footnotes. And this is very similar to like, you know, uh, track changes and word is you can mm -hmm. just make a comment. Okay, don't need to be using that language here. All right. um, yes, because it is a bad word. All right, so yeah, and this is just, I mean, if, if you need to do a actual footnotes, it's got the footnote thing to where, you know, you highlight the part and you can write your footnote. Um, this is just strange. Okay. Um, you know, and then you have a footnote, all right? Mm -hmm. So if you write things with footnotes, that's how you do it. All right. So the final thing I'm going to show you at this point is this, this, uh, bit above the font area. So that, that probably should have showed you this first, but oh, well, um, so you can play with these and you can figure this is basically view. You can turn off your binder so you don't, so it's out of the way. You can turn off the format bar if you know you're not going to mess with that. You can turn on the ruler. I actually usually leave the ruler on because I'm a weird control freak and stuff. Um, so you can do page view, which I don't know. That looks weird. Um, and let's see, I don't, I've never played with layouts. Are there layouts? There are no layouts. That might be why. Um, so, do do do. Uh, Margaret asked. Margaret had a question. Do we want to hit that? Uh, if you upgrade to Scrivener three, does it stop reverting font at every new scene? You can actually change that in the settings. Um, do, 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 do. I haven't done this in a long time, y'all. So uh, options. Can you guys see the options window? No. Okay. I probably have to share that separately. Um, let me look. I'm, I'm, let me let me find it first. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Make sure I'm main editor. Come on, you. Options. <laughs> do, do. Oh, you can do use current. Oh, whew, that's not right. I fucked that up. Oops. <laughs> Naughty word. All right. So I can't, I can't find exactly where to do it right now. You, what you can, in the settings, you can set Scrivener to um, have your specific fonts that you're using to open in all new projects. If you already have a project that you're halfway through, it's not going to apply to that, but it will apply to new projects that you open and you can set what font, what size and all that. Um, I don't know if that helps Margaret. I'm sorry. Um, let's get back to this top part again. I thought, yeah. I just thought that that was a good, you know, we weren't really into the top part yet. So I thought it was just kind of a good time to do that. Okay. So you've got a little search thing. You can play with these buttons and if you're even remotely have any kind of you know any kind of experience opening files and things in computer programs you'll figure this stuff out um so this little plus is where you can um create new a new text you can create a new folder you can create a new character sketch a new setting sketch um and whatever you did last if you just press the button that's what it'll do so you're welcome. <laughs> um, so yeah, all right. Uh, let's see what else. Obviously, this is trash, but we don't have any trash. So you can see it down here. We don't have any <laughs> trash yet. One of the cool things about um, Scribner is that it, uh, the trash doesn't. You have to actively 
like, you know, your recycle bin. You have to actively mm -hmm. delete stuff out of that. Otherwise, it, you know, you just move it to trash and that's it. So like this one that I just made that I didn't even title, you know, I don't want that. So we're going to move it to trash. Boop. Okay, bye. Okay, so you can attach things, insert image from file, add footnotes, add comic, add, add links. Remember how I said you can make new stuff, you know, you can make new files and things yes. multiple ways. You can do almost everything multiple ways here. So like to make a new file, I already showed you, you can right click down here on your binder and add whatever you need. Or you can come up here to the little plus and you can add whatever you need. You can also go up, where is it? Where is it? Project? Yeah. Under project, go new text, new folder, new template. And it also has a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can do so many things in Scrivener multiple ways. So whichever is most intuitive to you, if mm -hmm. you're used to using this, you know, these, menu options use those menu options if you're used to doing a lot of right clicking use that if you're used you know whatever's easiest that's the cool thing about it all right so we're gonna kind of skip these guys because they're not really yeah they're not really important again it's the <laughs> things that you don't need them to start you don't need your project keywords to start what you might find useful though are your project targets so let's say can you see this extra window? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so let's say you are writing a novella, which I have to write sometime in the next two weeks. Um, so you want it to be, say, say you want it to be 25, oops, not 250,000, but 25,000 <laughs> words. Yeah, that would be way too much, right? So mm -hmm. super cool thing. If you open the options, you may not be able to see this part. Oh, no, you can still see this part. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can give yourself a deadline. I Yeah, April 12th, 2011. <laughs> right. That's what I want. All right. You missed that one by, by just a little bit. I know, right? I'm already <laughs> blind. Damn it. All right. So you want the deadline. That's when you need to, that's your deadline. You can go to session target. And you can say when it resets each time. I am a, a kind of a late person, so I usually set it to 3 a.m. You are writing a novella. Is that what it says? A novella, but not a two-week schedule. <laughs> you know, hi, my name is Vanessa. Have you met me? I'm stupid. <laughs> I take on way more than I could possibly do. Shh, don't tell Rachel. All right. Um, Okay, so you can, and if you really want it, like if it's nano, you can count all the text written anywhere. So like you can count all of your your character sheets. You can count, if you write uh, an outline, you can count that or not, you know, if, if so. Anyway, um, you can automatically calculate from draft deadline. And then you can say, okay, I write on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. I can't write on Thursdays because I have children and they do all the things those days or something. I don't and they don't, but anyway. And then Friday, but then I give myself Saturday off. All right, but do allow on the writing on the day of deadline because that's when I get a lot of my words on the day it's due, <laughs> right? And then you hit okay, all right? And so then look right here. You see how it's kind of grayed out a little bit. But it has calculated that in order to get my uh, 25,000 word nov novella done by April 12th, I have to write 1136 words every day or e not every day, but every day that I have said that I'm going to write. Mm -hmm. And when you inevitably it well, when I inevitably miss that <laughs> the next day, it recalculates and says, Bitch, you need to do 1,300 words now. <laughs> so that's how my life works. Anyway, okay, so that's this little target thing, right? Um, <laughs> Millwardians. <laughs> oh, Margaret, I love you already. All right. Um, okay, so and then you've got this other little thing that are statistics. Mm. And it's Just like word. It's... Yes, but it's a little different. Um, so you can see how many words in your whole thing. These are only in your compiled documents. So it's only going to be in the things that are going to be in your manuscript because manuscript manuscript um, text items 
are automatically included in the compile unless you change it. You don't need to worry about that right now. But so it this first tab is compiled, right? So it shows you all those things. Look down here. You open your word frequency and it tells you <laughs> how often look, there's my phone number. Y'all don't look at my phone number. Yeah. So um, wait, let me oops, let me bring that back up. So anyway, so it does word frequency and it will tell you like, so if you've got if you've got crutch words, like my crutch words are uh, smile, just actually, it'll tell you, girl, you have used actually 437 times. I'll be like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so yeah. All right. You can also do yes, compiling is its own masterclass. That is true. Um, and I am not yet at the level to teach that. All right, so selected documents. So now it's telling me in this, just this document I have, or just because I only have one selected, I could select mm -hmm. more. I have all this, right? And then you also yeah. have options. So you can change how that, you can also set how many words you consider a paperback page so that when it tells you you have 300 pages, you'll know how that's calculated. You can also set a list of words to ignore. So when it's doing the frequency check, I don't want it to check for, you know, um, for uh, articles because I don't want it to count the, I'm, you know, the is a valid word. Yes, all those bobblehead dolls that nod, smile, and shrug. All of mine do that. All of them. <laughs> <sighs> all the things. All right. <laughs> So that's that. And that's just useful and fun. And this is the dreaded compile button that we are currently ignoring. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this one's also cool. Wait, y'all, wait, let me move my, listen. I'm, I'm 12 years old. So sometimes I write stuff in my manuscripts and make Scrivener. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just so I haven't read it to me because I'm a 12 year old boy. <laughs> All right, um, back here, it's a little mouse over. So mm -hmm. you can see how much you've done based on your targets, right? I've written eight words out of 25,000. Uh, and eight out of, right, go me. I mean, you gotta get, you gotta get to eight before you can get to 25,000. So it works. Right. All right. Yeah, it'll read a whole scene, Carol. It'll read, it'll read the whole manuscript. That's how I actually, you guys have manuscripts that you worked on and you got most of the way through and then you kind of abandoned for something else. Mm -hmm. And then three years later, you go back to it. And you're like, oh, I should probably finish that. Yeah. So that's what I do when that happens. Uh, I have Scrivener read it to me, you know, and I read along, but it's very almost as satisfying as texting sexy words in number form to a pager. <laughs> well, we're not showing our age at all, are we, Margaret, you and I? <laughs> all the younger folks are going to be like, what's a pager? <laughs> <laughs> all right. A little further out to the right, um, we've got uh, different ways to view. Now, this is another thing that's super cool. Super cool. I don't know where that came from. Um, so these are different ways you can view what you have, right? So right now we're on the document, we're on the text, mm -hmm. part, right? This part right here, you have to be up the higher, look, it's your cork board. <laughs> so you have to be on a folder level to see this because obviously if you're down here, it just automatically takes you back to the text because there's sure. no, all right, so we're here. Now, you might remember when we were over on this little notes tab in the inspector on the far right, we wrote something in here. Yeah. Um, you can add a corkboard image, Carol. I'm sure you can. I just haven't done it because I don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so you can see Joe Compton starts a new project, which was what... Um, which is what we wrote in this synopsis card, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why that's what makes these so useful, right? Um, because then, oh, you know, maybe he didn't write, he, maybe he didn't start a new project in the first scene. Maybe he did it after. 
Or maybe he did it at the end. Right? Which certainly certainly would be true because the first two would be Joe procrastinates for a half hour, Joe checks email, and then Joe starts a new project. Or Vanessa. Like, interchangeable. Yeah, it interchangeable. Yeah. It would be the same. I'm not even going to lie. It would be the same. It'll totally be the same. Um, so, yeah. So, you can drag these around. Um, now, I think... I'm going to switch over to my actual project. Let me switch it so that it's actually got the note cards. Um, Margaret has something that maybe you want to address. Has, maybe uh, has never found the corkboard useful. There's not enough screen. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really use, I actually don't really use the corkboard very often because I am a linear writer. So it's already in the order. So I am not going to be moving shit around on my corkboard. See, this oh. would be really good for screenwriting. This is a yeah. good screenwriting one. This is this is what we do when we're making a movie. Is we take the, we take index cards. Yeah. Now I'm going to show my age and and have an actual corkboard right in front of me, and then put them up and and move them around. So. Yeah, and people and 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 novel writers or, or authors will do that with. Um, yeah, because uh, Nick's a screenwriter, so because Nick. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Because all, all the best screenwriters do the yeah. same. To me, to me, right? Yeah, to me and Nick, probably this is the most exciting thing about this this software right now. Yeah. is this and <laughs> you know, authors also use like post-it notes on the wall and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. And the cool thing is, you can actually, you can actually write your stuff straight in here. This was scene two, but Joe is procrastinating, so it's now scene one. Right. So you can do that immediately, immediately. Um, <laughs> Margaret is a post-it no fan. <laughs> yeah, I don't use the cork board nearly as much as I use other things, but it's very useful for folks who do, right? Yeah. Um, and again, you know, you can just like reorder it. But I'm like I said, I'm a linear writer, so I don't I don't mess with my my little index cards. But it's very very useful. Um, I think I'm going to switch to the other, um, my other one, but I want sure. to, wait, I want to, I don't know why it's like that. Hang on. Oh, that's why, because I had a split screen. I don't want a split screen. I, I want to get it set up properly. Yep, we'll do this. So, um, what is, that is so weird. Oh, it's because it's so big. It's so big. Um, no, it isn't. It's the same thing. Why is it showing me both? I'm sorry. I'm talking to myself. I should not be talking to my. It's I fine. Know. It's totally fine. Um, no, that is right. just to, just to let everybody out there, uh, know if you have any questions and just came in, uh, please put them in the comments and we will work them in because, yes. uh, we're, we're headed toward the back end of this. So, you yes. know, we want to, we, we want to get those in as soon as possible. So, um, all right. I mean, and if you missed early, if you're coming in and you missed early on, if you have questions about compiling, save them because Vanessa's not ready to talk about compiling just yet. Mm -hmm. so. Joe, if you want to put that. Yeah. Okay. That's the new one. All right. So, this is a book I have not finished. Uh, that one of the books that is like two thirds done that I have not as yet finished. All right. Um, so you, as you can see, this is, uh, this is my cork board. Um, and you might notice that the pins at the top are different colors. Mm -hmm. And that is because on your cards, if you look, if I, oops, oh, you can't see it when I right click. Can you, I wish I had known that. Um, so we'll go to the inspector. So you don't need to see the custom data. You don't need to see, oops, you don't, I just said you don't need to see that. Oh, okay, I see what happened. Um, that's not, where is it? Where's the piece I want, y'all? Oh, I don't know if you can do it on here. No. Oh, yeah, okay, it's at the bottom. They, they move this. So if you look down here in the bottom right, can you see the bottom right? <laughs> compiling it that's right you see on the bottom right below the yes. and stuff so yes. these are pieces like uh consider them like tags that can go on your each of your cards slash text files 
So I'm trying to click on the damn video again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, happy Pi Day. All right. So as you can see, you've got the option to label. Oh, you can't see because you can't see that. Let me, can I do that? There we go. All right. Yeah. So uh, if you pull down the little down here on the bottom right, if you hit that, it'll open up basically this that you can choose from. But since you can't see that, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull this guy up. So, um, so yeah, so you can create you can create different colors. You can see I did the labels as point of points of view, so I could track whose points of view I have. And if you look mm -hmm. here on the left, you see the little dot? That corresponds. You see on the left on the binder? Uh -huh. left, on the binder, each of the scenes has a different color dot. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Right there? It corresponds to these guys. So I can see at a glance, Zoe's point of view, she's got lots of point of view in this one. Um, so, but you can add, you can see, I also have, um, oh yeah, I love Notion. Notion is another, another thing I use for real, for real. Um, all right. So, you know, you can see, I not only have points of view, I also have needs a rewrite mm -hmm. so that I know if I see this little yellow dot on, if I see a yellow dot out here, it means I need to look at that. And then mm -hmm. I also have one if I want to cut something, I'm not ready to cut it yet, but I think it's probably going to be cut. I can <laughs> see that. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And then there's also status, which is this bottom right. You see where it says revised draft on the bottom mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So that comes from here and these are pre set, um, but you can change them. You can add it. You can add them. You can you can add to them. You can completely change them. You can use something totally different here. You don't have to do it as whether it's first draft, revised draft, or whatever. You can do it. In, you know. You can. Um, <laughs> Al, I could talk to you about Notion forever. Um, <laughs> so you can you can you can use either one of these, the label list or the status list, for whatever you want whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to use, I'll use first draft I, and, and revised draft and final draft. I don't do like second, third, fourth, cause that just is exhausting. Um, and done, done. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna look at it ever again. I'm finished, we are over. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then let's see, is there any can you rename them or did are they yeah. set that yeah. yeah i'll show you um so if you double click you can rename right you oh can... i was talking about i was talking about the um the four the, the those... yeah. yeah same thing you can oh. change it to whatever you want it doesn't even have to have anything to do with the draft some people some people use this for point of view mm. you know some people i mean you can you can literally use these for anything anything you want. Um, so you may I would probably have changed done to fucking thank God. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you can do that. I think that's a great, great idea. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the done and I'm going to say, stop fucking around with this. So there we go. So um, Yes, exactly, Margaret. We are finished. Get out of my manuscript. No, don't. Stay where you are, but don't do anything else. All right. Um, so the other thing up here, right, we were doing with the cork boards and all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. you can, let me close the inspector again. Let me go to here. So now you can see revised draft. You see how it says across first draft, mm -hmm. revised draft. So those are your labels, right? And then the colors up here correspond to whatever you do with the colored ones, right? So remember gotcha. blue was Zoe's point of view. So right. they correspond to all these, right? And so if you look at a different set, see, I have different colors. Yeah. And again, you can track anything you want with those, whatever you're trying to track. Now the other really, and this is probably the last thing um, I'm going to show you unless somebody has questions about other things that I haven't shown mm -hmm. you, um, is the outliner. So up here we have the text, right? If we want to see the text, 
we have the cork board, and then we have the outliner. This is awesome. <laughs> so you can set up these columns however you want. There's a little arrow here on the far right. You see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that yes. will open up. You can't see it, but it opens up a, a list of a whole bunch of different uh, options you can put in there. You can put total word count in there. You can put um, regular word count. So I guess we don't need total word count. You can put progress. And that's if you've set uh you can set for each individual text section you can actually set what you want your word count to be um so then you can see a progress thing uh we're gonna take that out um what else relationships uh, that that is metadata that i created um so yeah so i've got like relationships secondary relationship character arcs settings all right, so these are custom metadata I made. I haven't shown you how to do that, but you can figure it out. It is not hard. It, we can go over it if you want. But the cool thing about the outliner is that it will show you, if you go to the top, oops, that's too far up. So you can see these are all my little folders. So I can open my little folders and then I can see, so I can see by section, right? So this mm -hmm. is the it's this point of view. It's in revised status. I don't need the section type, so let's get rid of the section type because I don't need that. Where is it? All right. Um, these are the character the character arc. This is Jenny's arc. Um, it has this many words in it. And the cool thing too about the word count is you can just eyeball your manuscript and see about how long each of your scenes are, if that's important. Mm -hmm. um, the relationships. This scene has no relationships. Uh, at all. Uh, where is it located? It's at Claude's compound. This one down here, it's Mecca and David's relationship, their mother or their daughter and father, uh, Jenny and Oliver. That's, I'm not even going to get into what that is. Um, <laughs> setting, setting is at Sarah Brownstone, Sarah's Brownstone. Um, let's see, question, thoughts on making new folder versus new page for scenes, how to organize best for chapters later. Um, the way it sets it up for you, excuse me, in the novel template is the way I would recommend. A folder, and that's what we did on the first one that I had up, a folder as the chapter, chapter one, and then individual texts underneath. Um, so basically, this one's set up a little differently. This is K.M. Weiland's, um, her outlining template that she has for Scrivener. So it divides it up into Acts, it actually divides it divides the acts up into sections. So it's Act 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, midpoint, 2C. And then when within those, there's the hook, right? So that, but all of this kind of makes it a little complicated to when you go to compile, because you know, you got to figure out where your chapters are. So, you know, what you use is up to you. But the easiest way is probably to make your chapter a folder. On, in the folder are the scenes for that. That's the way I generally do it. This one, it, this one you're looking at is really the first time I used this particular, um, this particular template. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing is I ended up altering it and making my own template, which is the one that I showed you when I we were opening one up that had my picture on it, uh, where it's more divided into chapters. Um, I'm gonna bring Smashwords into this discussion. Uh, from premium for having tabs in it, which makes me want to make pages of scenes or something not to bring, oh, not to bring smash words into this, but they docked one of her books from premium for having tabs in it. Well, you shouldn't be using tabs anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay. So that's really kind of basically, that's basically all you need to start writing. Mm-hmm. So did that make sense? Totally, yeah, I, I learned a ton. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty okay. awesome. Uh, to, yes, I agree with you, Carol. What is between a scene and a chapter? I think your tab. Are we talking about like a tab, like an indent tab? What are we talking about? I'm confused. I, I'm clearly not following this conversation very well. Um, 
So, all right. Yeah. That's it. There, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we'll wait for Margaret to catch up and maybe she can explain it for you. But uh, yeah, I, I'll, um, and I'll grab Kay Weiland's um, uh, template. Template. Thank you. And I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it mm -hmm. in the uh, description for everybody, the link to it, so that everybody can go and check that out. Uh, she says, never mind, it was <laughs> super cool. Um, and there are all kinds of templates out there for Scrivener. Just do a Google search. Um, and you can create your own templates also. So, uh, like, there's, I know there's Save the Cat um, out there. There's uh, one, I have... I, I created one that is um, based on the one page, what's it called? What the hell is it called? Uh, one page novel. Oh yeah, the manual super super helpful. Um, but I created one out of the one page novel, which is, Ev, what is her name? I don't remember what her name is. Uh, I can't remember her name. But it, yeah, if you search on like one page novel structure, you know, one page novel structure, you'll find it. Um, but it's really cool. It's it. The interesting thing about that is that it says, okay, your these are the eight steps of a novel. You know, these are the eight parts of a novel. But this is the order you plot them in, which is different than the order that they are in, which I thought was really interesting. So anyway, yeah, you can create Robert, your own templates. Go ahead. Robert McKee's template would be, "Why are you writing this piece of shit?" <laughs> That would be his. That would be the title of his template. <laughs> that, that would probably be the title of mine too. If you want to get right down to it. Um. <laughs> Margaret <laughs> wants to know from Carol what beverage to. Uh, probably a, a very strong one. <laughs> Not too strong, because you want to remember. Because yeah, because you have to you have to cognitively yes. function right and yeah. and actually use the program. But yes, some yeah. something to calm the nerves a little bit as yes. you. To, to so you don't feel... tear out all your hair and everything. Yeah. So, you know. and, um, because I have so much of it to spare. I know. I was going to say, <laughs> I know a lot of people who don't have anything to tear. So <laughs> I have a lot, but it mostly kind of falls out on its own. So I don't have to tear it at all. Um, so I hope that, that that was helpful as a as an intro. Because the thing you the thing you really need to remember about Scrivener is you don't have to under, You don't have to know all of it. You don't. You learn stuff as you need it, which is pretty much just like publishing, right? There's mm -hmm. so much information about publishing out there. It, it's hugely overwhelming, even for those of us who have been doing it for a while, it's still really overwhelming. But you learn the bits you need to learn when you need to learn them. And that's it. And Scrivener is the same way. And it is such a powerful tool. You can keep all of your research. We didn't even actually, um, Joe, will you put it back up on the, up on the screen? Sure. We didn't really talk much. So. Um, as you can see, the manuscript is up here, right? Um, but, oh, excuse me. But I've also got, so the outline part is um, actually K.M. Wyland's stuff. So this okay. will also help you in writing the book. So you've got like general structure, you know, beginning your outline, what your premise is, you know, and she has lots of stuff in there that will help you move things forward excuse me, including your theme, like what's your theme and everything. But down here, if you look down here, all of the folders and stuff, and you can create additional folders here. If this does not, excuse me, if this does not fit your needs, like maybe, I don't know, maybe you've got a magic system and this mm -hmm. doesn't have magic. So, well, it's probably under world building. No, it's not weird. Um, so you can create folders for anything. Like you can see up here, I've got also got a beats section. And this mm -hmm. is where I wrote a little synopsis of each of the scenes that I was writing, because that's how, that's my process. Um, and your characters, right? So here are all my characters. Mm -hmm. But you also have like research. So if you have things, um, like I did some research on Buddhist cosmology and you, know, you can have web pages, you can pull web pages in. Um, here, this is the stuff that's pre-populated in hers. So if you mm -hmm. have information, research on communication for your world, specific dates that are important, anything you need to note down, you can keep all that here. So you don't have 50,000 Word documents, mm -hmm. you know, and you can 
the other really interesting thing is, so say I'm up here in my manuscript and I'm writing, oops, I'm not writing a whole act. I'm just writing the opening scene, right? So I'm writing the opening scene, but man, I really need something out of that Buddhist cosmology thing. So up here on the right, and this is one of my favorite things. When I learned how to do this, I was like, I am winning life. <laughs> you can split your screen. So I can go down here, open my Buddhist cosmology, which is not really done very well here because it was pulled in <laughs> from Wikipedia. There it is. All right. Um, so yeah, so then I can be like typing up here and I can mm. be like, oh, what was that word? Oh, that word. Okay. And then go back up here. So, <laughs> you know, you can have your character, your character sheets open here. Um, nice. You know, you can have, I have Jenny. See, these are, this is my character. These are my character sheets. <laughs> as you can um you can see it's a lot different than the other one this is my like i actually made this character sheet as a printout as a as a worksheet um so and just imported it into here so uh yeah so there you go okay you can take it off now all right i just wanted to show those things yeah that, absolutely that, you know it's not just for writing it's also for gathering all the information that you need to write so yeah yeah, this awesome. is why I love Scrivener. It's got like just about everything. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, tell everybody, what is it? What, what is the cost right now? What's the cost of the 3.0? I think know? it's $45. It is so mm -hmm. underpriced, y'all. They, they could price this over 100 bucks, and it would still be worth it. Yeah, I mean, final draft is $200. So yeah. if you get if you get a crappy copy it's usually around four or five hundred dollars if you yeah. get like all the bells and whistles with it too but yeah yeah Scrivener is so like they've only raised the price on the on the word word the word version the word the windows version only went up to match the mac version when they hit scrivener three because uh, because in the past like I said, we were the bastard stepchildren. And um, I don't know, can you be a bastard stepchild? I feel like that's not, anyway, yeah. um, sorry. Uh, but we we didn't have parity, right? We had fewer we had fewer of the bells and whistles than the Max did. Yes, definitely, and, and with uh, Camp NaNoWriMo coming up, you watch out for the discount. Mm -hmm. so they usually give out a 20% off coupon for anybody who's actually doing nano but if you mm -hmm. win nano if you wait until you win nano they usually give a 50 percent off coupon but I, they definitely do that in november i don't know if they do it for the camps um but I, i'm guessing they probably do i don't know um i was saying something before that but i've forgotten what it was all right well why don't you tell everybody where they can get, catch you at and let everybody know just say so let everybody know vanessa did a Scrivener tutorial where she went really in depth on a lot of this stuff. Uh, was it over on your Twitch or was it on YouTube? It's you did it on currently both, right? on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it was on Twitch, but it's it's currently on my YouTube channel, which mm -hmm. you would really. Where's the best place to find? I don't because my my I don't have enough followers yet to actually be able to have a name for my channel, yeah. so it's just like youtube channel user or channel you know and then all these numbers and stuff yeah, yeah. anyway i love i'll put it i'll put it in the description for everybody okay, so that great. they can yeah, grab that's it where you can find me look in the description below that's where you'll find <laughs> me. he has all my links so yeah so oh yeah carol mentions the free trial mm -hmm. y'all the free trial and I, I don't think there's any software definitely not any writing software that does this anymore um but scrivener's free trial is 30 use days, 30 days of use, not 30 consecutive days. So if you write on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you could theoretically use this thing for what there's eight, you can use this thing for three or four months, right? Just make you close it when you're done writing. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yep. No, that makes total sense. To no, me. no software does that anymore. All yeah. software is, you know, seven day trial and it's seven days from the time you start it. So yeah. Oh, yoga's like that. If you don't, if you, if you get a 30 day yoga trial, you have to do it every single day. Otherwise right? they, they dock you. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I, I actually probably have done that, but I've not kept track of it. I actually also have a link tree and a, oh, I made a new thing. I can't remember. I bought an AppSumo thing that is like link tree, but I can't remember what it's called. Car Carol stole my thunder. That's what I was basically going to do is just do a bitly and put it as yeah. a message into. So, you know, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, but uh, that'll be there for everybody as well. The, the templates and everything. Vanessa. I could not have thought of a better person to do this show to start with. This was fantastic. I learned a ton and I, you know, I'm so excited to, to I'm really excited about, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's my one talent, Carol, that I can get people that are smarter than me to talk. That's really, I think she's talking about the bitly thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think she was alluding to you being as smart as her. <laughs> and you're both really smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Great minds think alike, yes, right? exactly. So, but yeah, I could not have thought of a better uh, way to start this series. And everybody, just so you know, uh, these will go on every Monday through June. Uh, and next week, we have Diana Morrison with us. And Diane is an expert in Twitch. And she runs a Twitch community that has over 400 followers that gets constant constant traffic and she's going to show us some really great ways to build that traffic how what it means to be an affiliate and all those things that twitch provides and some things you probably didn't know that twitch does for you uh so you'll want to come and tune in at 9, 8, 9 p.m eastern for that uh, again same show same time and uh, we'll be back next week for that uh if you're here for the first time uh, thank you for being here. Welcome to Go Indie Now. You found us, so hit, smash that like button, comment, subscribe. If you do think of a question after the show, after you've watched the show, and you come back to it and you think about a question, come back, put it in the comments below the, this video in wherever you are, either Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. You can do it, all three. Actually, I don't know if you can comment on Twitch afterwards, but but for Facebook and YouTube, you can. And so, and then if, if I find a comment, cause it'll alert me that there's a comment, I'll let Vanessa know and she'll come back and answer that question for you. Heck so, yeah. uh, the, this is a great, uh, great question, Carol. I appreciate it for being the last question. I actually, thanks to Margaret in the chat, uh, is there today. She made a suggestion and I listened to her because I'm smart, like you said, and I listened to my audience. And so I put it in the about section of the YouTube channel. So if you go to our YouTube front page, you go to the about section, you can see the entire schedule of when we go live and what shows are on what days. So then you can check that out there. That is there now. I have just posted that and it's there. So everybody can do that. Uh, you're our guest of honor. So I'm going to leave it to you to close the show for us. So you get to say the magic words, please. What time is it? It's always time to go indie now.